Plants need very few things to survive, but water is certainly one of them. So in this video, we're gonna go through watering in the garden from beginner to advance. So no matter where you're at in your gardening journey, you'll have some good info on how to properly water your garden this season. And let's start off with the humble, the elegant watering can. In my opinion, every garden, no matter how large or small, you need a watering can because of the manual flexibility of it. I can come in, I've got some young seedlings in this bed here, and I can just quickly give them this little drink that maybe they're not gonna be getting from an irrigation system. So I personally really like it for that reason. If your garden gets to a point where you need more than maybe two, three gallons at a time, it's time to move on to something else. But for now, this works perfectly well. And you'll notice there is a little breaker on top that is making this spray a lot more gentle. It's ideal if you get a can that is a little bit more flexible. This one's kind of an OG old school can. You can't really remove this or swap it out. Sometimes it's nice to have that. Definitely not a must have. On the note of flexibility, what I really love a watering can for specifically is doing little quick spot treatments in the garden. So I've got some liquid furt here. I'm just gonna throw a little dollop in. I'm not gonna measure too crazy, not get too fancy about it. But this is really great where maybe you're two weeks into your seedling journey for the season and they're sizing up and they actually need some nutrition. I'm gonna throw a little furt in. I can do a spot treatment. Maybe I can come over and hit my onions with this, hit my greens, give it a little drink. So the can just adds that extra level of flexibility that really every garden needs. When you're coming in to water, especially with a can, it's really deceiving when you look at the surface of the soil. You can think that you watered the bed and then you dig your fingers down and lo and behold, it's only moist to maybe a quarter of an inch. So something that I really like, whether you're using a can or any other watering tool like a hose, is to water weight water. What I mean by that is come in, you give it a little bit of a sprinkle, you let that soil soak in, and then you come back maybe five minutes or so and give it another deeper drink. Sometimes you can find that water will run off, especially if it's really dry. Now, we've used the can. Once the garden gets bigger, you need to have a hose. I've got maybe five to seven hoses under my belt in the 10 years I've been gardening, and only these have made it all the way through. So go premium on hoses. It's one of the things you should really spend the money on. Get more length than you need. Don't buy a 25 foot hose. Get like a 50, 75, 100 foot hose. I'm not gonna show you how to use a hose. We all know how to use a hose, but I'm gonna show you a couple cool attachments I like and talk about some watering techniques that I use a hose for. To me, this is the best way to use a hose. Some kind of attachment like this. I like one of these sort of rose breaker nozzles. You can get them in all sorts of different types. I like a fine spray, something nice and gentle. Maybe it's mimicking the rain, which is how most plants get watered in nature. You can get ones with the different attachments and different styles. Again, I like this one and I'll show you why. Look at the spray. I don't need to say anything. That just looks and feels so satisfying when it's going into maybe a dragon fruit container. I mean, take a look. Look at that. It more or less is just vanishing in there because it's broken up enough to actually be absorbed well. That is why I love it. But there is a hose style that I honestly think is a standard in most larger scale gardens right now. I'll show you in a sec. For larger scale gardens, I really love a retractable hose reel. This will come out like 80 feet or so. This one's from Hoselink. But how do you water a mature or established plant well? There's no strict science to watering when you have all these different plants in the garden. It gets kind of confusing. I mean, the short answer without a lot of nuance is kind of a dumb answer. It's like when the plants need water. So the question really for how often to water is how do you know when a plant actually needs water? So take this rose arch here. This is a Cecile Bruner climbing rose. I hit this maybe once a week or so with a fairly deep water. Now, why do I do it at that frequency? Well, it's certainly not a plant like this parsley or cilantro right here. This is a very short, leafy annual that can wilt in heat. It's gonna need water more consistently and it's also growing in less soil. So that's why I would hit that more often. With this one, the roots are pretty well established now. They are deeper and it looks pretty darn good if you ask me. So yeah, I haven't watered it in a week. I'm gonna give it a nice drink. And notice, I'm just chilling here. I'm just standing, sitting. I'm not getting the leaves too wet. Although I think that's a little bit more overblown of an issue than a lot of people will say. And I'm watering this probably at the worst time of day, to be honest with you. I'm watering it mid-afternoon. In a perfect world, I might hit this early in the morning 
or maybe a couple hours before sunset is another good time so long as you're not getting it all over the leaves. Why? Because in the morning, it has the most ability to take up water into the plant's roots, get nice and full, and make its way through the day. In the evening, it's helping to cool down the soil. Actually, a lot of plants grow at night. In the middle of the day, like now, again, it's, it's not the end of the world. I mean, when a plant needs water, that's when you water a plant. So if it was wilting, this might be the time. But right now, you're gonna lose some to wind, you're gonna lose some to just general evaporation, and you sort of missed a bit of the window when it would be more effectively used by the plant. But I would say, have a little bit of grace. Also have some grace for a plant wilting. I mean, just because a plant wilts, it doesn't mean that it needs water immediately. In fact, overwatering can also cause plants to wilt. And in the hottest parts of the day, your things like lettuce, cucumbers, squash, pumpkins, all of those plants in the summer are going to wilt no matter what, no matter how much water you give them. It doesn't even matter. So you have to build that gardener's intuition. That's why I'm just standing here watering this relentlessly while I'm talking to you because I know it's going to take me at least three to five minutes to deliver enough water down there so then I can move on and go on to my next watering task. Watering seedlings, an art, a science, a mix of the two, and sometimes a heartbreak when you forget to water and you kill your seedlings that you've waited like two weeks for, trust me, I've done it like a million times. So the way I think about it, if I have a tray like this, this is our universal bottom tray and our six cell trays, well, the six cell trays have this huge hole at the bottom. So the most efficient way to water would actually be from the bottom. And that's why sometimes I, I like a can that you can remove this top rows off of, because right now I'm going to have to kind of like eke it out here and it still works. But again, would be better if it was a single stream in this case. I like to just fill these up maybe halfway full and then let the trays soak up from the bottom. This is a little bit of fish fertilizer in here because at about the two week point, you probably wanna be giving your seedlings just a little light feed. Remember, they're, they're eating off of their seed leaves at the, at effectively, the, the nutrition in the seed. At about two weeks or so when they're putting out these true leaves, you need to water them more to support them, but you also might need to fertilize them a little bit. Another thing you can do is just come in and give it that top water if you don't have trays that can uptake water from the bottom. But seedlings, really, you need to monitor. And I would say one of my biggest problems with seedlings is I tend to actually overwater them in the sense that the trays, I don't allow them enough time to dry out sometimes. The roots have nowhere to go. They're sort of stuck in the water and soil mixture and they need to breathe. And so really be careful about that because weirdly, for me at least, that is a bigger problem. A couple notes here, when you're outside doing some watering like this, you can come in and just check and see how you're doing. You put your finger down, see how wet it gets. Maybe two, three, four inches is what you're looking for. If it's only wet to the first inch, you know you need to sit here and more patiently water. And, and a more philosophical point, remember, you're not just watering to keep the plant alive, as in the baseline level of water it might need to just not die. What you're doing is you're trying to give it the adequate amount of water to support its growth. It's kind of like us, right? If I ate just the minimum calories I needed to survive just so that my biological functions didn't cease, like I didn't die, yeah, sure, I would technically be alive, but I would certainly not be thriving. And you know, you look at a plant like a tomato, as it's growing, you're going to need to increase that watering beyond what you did in the initial phases because it's putting out sometimes dozens or hundreds of fruits that are filled with water. So it's extremely, extremely important. And the one thing I'll say here is you'll notice I haven't talked about the predominant way that I personally water my garden because it's a little bit more technical and that would be drip irrigation. If you want a full guide on that, you can check out some of our install guides to show you how to do it, but it's just a little bit more complicated than some of these hand watering techniques or hose watering techniques that I think start you off really good in your first couple years of gardening. So check those guides out if you want. Check our store out for some irrigation supplies. Until next time, good luck in the garden and I've got a lot of watering to do.